Hi, everybody. Richard Tromans here again uh, from Artificial Lawyer for the very first ALTV product walkthrough since uh, coming back from sabbatical. I'm delighted to introduce to you uh, Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Uh, Stephanie is the founder and CEO of NL Patents, uh, which you're going to hear about uh, very shortly. And in fact, uh, as is the style with ALTV, um, the questions are all at the end. And I'm now going to hand over directly to Stephanie, who's going to give you a quick walkthrough. Take it away. Great. Thanks very much. So this is our website, which I have, uh, have on the screen. Once you sign in at the top right hand corner, you'll be brought to this page where you can start a search. So our product is an AI-based uh, patent research platform. So we have a domain-specific proprietary LLM that we've designed and built to truly understand patent language. So rather than matching keywords to identify similar patents to your invention, you can just simply use a sentence or two to describe what you've invented. And then our AI system reads it, understands it, and generates a list of patent documents basically instantly uh, that's conceptually similar to that invention description. So I asked Richard to give me an example of an invention today, and so we'll do that together. Okay, so how about um, can we have an actual physical uh, robotic lawyer shaped, okay. like, shaped like an android with two arms and two legs and a head? Uh, who can walk around the office and do um, some traditional uh, legal tasks. <laughs> this obviously is uh, a fictional uh, suggestion. We we don't obviously expect <laughs> robots, but uh, this is just to demonstrate the product. All right, well, I have provided one sentence describing what Richard has uh, presented to us. And uh, generally speaking, you can be as layman with this description or you can be as technical as you wish. So our system understands regular plain English and it also understands very um, difficult or nuanced patentees, um, which of course uh, many patent attorneys are very familiar with. So using our platform, you know, you could have uh, a range of expertise and a range of knowledge of the patent system. So there's no requirement to take what's generally presented in natural language and convert it to patent speak, which would, you would normally have to do if you were doing a keyword search. So I presented a one sentence description. I could have alternatively inputted a patent number. So if you were doing any sort of validity assessment, um, you could just simply input the patent number and away you go. Um, but for this example, uh, we're going to use what Richard provided and see what happens. So clicking start search, uh, we will, uh, after about a second, generate a list of patent documents that's conceptually similar to what Richard's just described. And so just reading the titles, um, quite interesting, which what we have come up with. And you can see that there's no um, fixation on the keywords that I use in the query but rather the system has identified sort of a general concept of what we've described and identified the closest prior art or the closest uh, patent prior art to what we have, uh, what we've, what we've put forward. And it looks like there's a, a bunch of Chinese and Indian patents, a Japanese patent down here. Um, we've automatically searched 121 million patents, which is the, um, the size of our database. We update our database every Saturday. So every Saturday we add the latest uh, patent information to our system. Our system has coverage of all the major jurisdictions. Popping open the, the filters, you can see all of the patent offices that we support. Um, but let's say you know we wanted to filter the results to just uh, limit it to the US, um, WIPO, and perhaps uh, the EPO. So selecting those fil filters will limit the search to only search those particular jurisdictions. Uh, and then we've had a, a refined list of results. And it looks like there's some that are quite old <laughs> that have come up interestingly. Um, so popping up with the filters again, let's scroll down and say, you know, I only wanna see things after 2000 and apply the filters again and we'll see what happens. So after applying these filters, we're getting, uh, pushing the results towards a more favorable um, subset of our our database in order to um, really search what we're looking for. And yes, looking again, these titles seem very, very interesting. Smart legal assistant 
legal system, research system and method, mobile legal counsel system and method. Very, very interesting, I think. Um, so popping open any of the patent documents that we've identified. So this is a, um, a publication in the US. Um, we can scroll through the different sections of the patent document. Um, but what's really interesting in our system is that we have this handy little relevance analysis at the end. So clicking generate relevance analysis, um, the system will talk through all of the different aspects of this patent document and compare it to the query. So it's walking through each section and it will generate some quotes, some sections of interest and some further um, you know, particular claims in this case that may be of interest to the person reviewing this patent document. So again, rather than having to read the patent document in, in its entirety, this relevance analysis will compare the query to this patent document and help the user um, identify which sections of the document they should be focusing on and considering. Um, taking this information, we can then go into any portion of this specification. Um, I'll just use the claims as an example. And I can take my cursor and highlight any section of the patent document. Um, I'm going to say just, you know, perhaps this initial um, preamble on the first, um, the first limitation. And I can highlight with my cursor, click save this section, and the system will highlight that section. The act of me highlighting that section tells the system, this is what I want you to focus on. This is the relevant section. Please learn from what I'm teaching you. I want you to focus on AI. And so when you do that, you can click refine, the system will take that learning into consideration and generate a new list of patent documents that's influenced by that information. And you can see in real time how the result list has changed to reflect that learning. So the first reference moved up two positions. Um, looking down the list, reference number five is new. So it didn't even appear in the first list of results, but has become relevant as a result of this refinement that I just uh, mentioned, uh, et cetera, as you look down the list. One other feature that I'll show you that's quite handy is the keyword uh, filter. So there is, of course, a time and a place for keywords. If there's a very specific term of art that you know has to be somewhere in the patent documents in order for the reference to be relevant, um, you can specify it here. So opening up the keyword filter, um, we can specify where we want the keyword found. All fields would search the full specification. You could have a straight keyword match, or you could have a proximity between two words. So let's um, have a straight keyword match with the word legal. And I'm going to put an asterisk to truncate the word so that we can find any alternative conjugations or endings to that word. So I will confirm that requirement. And now all of the references that will be generated will have the word legal somewhere in the specification and the system will highlight where that term is found. Now going into these results, I can further generate a relevance analysis and I can highlight specific sections that I want the AI to focus on, continuously iterating upon the initial results list to get further uh, and closer to what we're actually looking for. So this system has many benefits. Of course, it's meant to mimic how a professional would typically search for patent documents. It's not just input output, it's a continuous iterative process. Uh, it's often found to find references that are overlooked by traditional approaches, which is another excellent value proposition of using AI for this purpose. So um, our clients have told us that consistently that after spending many, many hours or tens of thousands of dollars searching the traditional way, using NL patent for five minutes is able to unearth something um, that's extremely relevant, but uses um, obtuse language that they would not normally have thought to use to describe whatever it is they're looking for. And turns out to be extremely relevant to their search mandate and often will save the day in something like a litigation use case. So that's a quick overview of our product. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, Richard. Yeah, no, that's really fascinating. Um, could you just go back to the relevance analysis? Because that, that seems to be a very LLM-like uh, area. What it's done is, it, you know, it's quite, it's quite sensibly said, well, actually, it says, while the query is about an Android-shaped lawyer that can physically move around an office and perform legal tasks, uh, the patent does not mention any physical Android or Android-like capabilities. And then it goes on to explain what it actually does. 
which is etc deep learning machine um learning and so forth so that's i mean that shows a degree of sophistication and it also it, it kind of um, saves you time i would imagine oh absolutely um our clients tell us that they can do a pretty thorough search uh in under an hour which is uh, massive time savings uh frankly i we used to do patent searches in my old day job and it would take longer than an hour and often of course clients would not pay for much more than that amount of time for a, an, a lawyer at a big law firm to do this task <laughs> no, no totally and i mean in terms of the actual llm if i can ask you i mean can you say which uh which type of generative ai you're using behind this um i don't think so um we're in the process of uh, filing some patent applications currently and so i just want to be extra extra cautious <laughs> okay okay but just just so just so the viewers can understand that this this is not just i mean are, are there elements of natural language processing here as well or is this all primarily coming from generative ai so the relevance analysis the generative ai model um the similarity engine that we've designed is not a generative ai model it is um it is generated through a vector database uh, that we've created through running um, all of the patents in our system through the um, through the model that we've created in order to generate a database. Got you. So, so you've taken a foundational model and you, you've done a degree of refining. Substantial refining, <laughs> yes. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And, uh, and, in, and in terms of how this would then be used uh, in the next stage of, of an attorney's work, I mean, what happens next? So you've got this search. Could you could you cut and paste the, the relevance analysis language into a document that would be useful for an IP lawyer, or how, how do you how do you then go to the next step? Yeah, so the relevance analysis uh, can be used mostly to help guide the eye of the user in the right direction. But of course, you can take snippets of this and use it in any sort of opinion. Um, that you're providing your client with. And it's help, it helps you to identify where the innovative concept in whatever the um, individual has purportedly invented um, to focus on. Because of course, um, oftentimes you'll have a very broad sort of nebulous um, invention and then you're, well, a purported invention and then you're trying to find where the invention actually lies. And so having um, something like this at your disposal, you can very quickly um, with very little effort um, identify which portions <clears throat> of the invention are actually innovative and new and which ones uh, perhaps are, are less, less uh, pivotal to warrant patent protection at the end of the day. And just a, just a last question, um, if people are interested, how can they get hold of this? How do they, how do they get a license? How do they bring this into um, their desktop? So we sell a uh, seat based um, license to our platform. So you get a login and then you can use it as much as you want for the duration of time that you are licensing our platform. Um, so we, we sell to law firms, we sell to corporations, uh, lawyers, non-lawyers, universities, research institutions. Uh, really, we have a broad spectrum of clients and some consultants as well. Um, so anybody that would touch the innovation process could actually make great use of our platform. So you can reach out to me, uh, Stephanie, at nlpatent.com, and we can point you in the right direction to, um, to set you up with trial access. And um, and wow you with the capabilities, because at the end of the day, I mean, a demonstration is interesting, but until you actually try a platform yourself and test it on a real use case of your own, it's hard to really see the value. Um, and we consistently wow people and so excited to continue to do so. Fantastic, Stephanie. That's really interesting. And thank you very much for uh, giving us the walkthrough. And uh, there'll be more information uh, below this video 